how to handle criticism. Some believe that criticism is an innately bad thing. This is completely true. Those who criticize you are your enemies. The main problem with this is the presumed arrogance of those who would dare tell you how to improve your work. Commentary is an odd genre on YouTube, who with both heroes and villains, but sometimes you can't even tell the difference between the two. And that, my friends, are fighting words. It's too late. Die! Really fucked up now, old man. You wanna play? Let's play. I don't think I need to express that I've got my issues with commentary as a whole on YouTube. While commentary has done great good, it's also done great harm. I'm not above that I've been a part of both sides, and I'm actively trying to improve myself in that regard, or at least trying to. That being said, and if you kind people will allow me, I'd like to take some time and talk about one prominent creator whom I think has caused some splashes in the nebulously titled commentary community. Prison Mate Luke. It's at this point that I feel I need to say that if you're just listening to this video as background noise, that I would suggest that you consider looking at the screen, since there will be exact examples that I need to show and it's kind of important. Now that we've got the boring stuff out of the way, let's talk about more boring stuff. Yay? You'll witness before you a phenomenon like no other. My name is Leonard Nimoy, and I will be your guide. So to start off, who is Prison Mate Luke? Well, he's a gameplay commentator. You know, the dime a dozen commentators who use some random gameplay in the background whenever they talk, and for some reason a lot of them suck at the game they're playing. I know that Luke does, especially at TF2. You bastard! They're trying to better up the gamers! And he's boring as all hell. When most of my videos don't need some deep dive to find it's the so truth, or even boring. if they need- But hey! That's subjective! What I put out there is what I put out there, and what I put out there is my opinion. That's something that I do! Oh no! <laughs> but to me, that's still an issue. Let me explain. Not only does he mostly cover drama, but how he presents himself in the videos he makes, he comes off as if he doesn't care about what he's actually talking about. The problem is that when it comes to commentary videos, unless you've got a personality, you're going to be relying on drama in order to draw your audience into it. But it's a drama that people don't care about, or if it's a video not related to popular drama, you can kiss them views goodbye. And that's a lethal combination, when you don't have any actual entertainment value and show yourself not to be the best with research or be unreliable to your audience. <laughs> What's wrong? You got nothing else to say? Now, this hasn't happened to such a harmful degree to Luke. Excellent! But you can easily tell there's such a notable dip in views in his sub game, which, at the time of me scripting this, his latest videos are not hitting home runs and he's been bleeding subscribers. And that's because, if you ask me, his audience is not coming to his channel for him or his personality. When people don't watch commentary just for spicy or new opinions, they watch commentary for people's personalities and what they have to say, whether what they have to say is unique or not. Oh, the irony! It's too much! See, the problem is with this harsh transition. Luke built his success on top of hot drama. Big hot drama. Stuff that was trending, and that's not a problem on its own. Trend surfing is something that a lot of YouTubers do, and it certainly works for them. But unfortunately, there's this nasty side effect to it. If you're trend surfing, then you have to keep hopping from wave to wave, and unless you've got the presentation or the personality that people like, they're only going to be there for the trends. Sure, there are exceptions to this, obviously, but considering that Luke barely does anything that actually makes him stand out as a commentator, there isn't going to be much of an appeal for his audience to return with the exception of him covering more drama that they're interested in. If I were to make a suggestion to Luke, and this is totally my subjective opinion, it would have been that he should have slowly transitioned to talking less serious subjects that he was interested in and build up a side of his audience that would be more interested in that style of content. When you focus mainly on drama, and there's no actual drama to be talked about, that will seriously hurt your channel. Don't become a slave to the drama. All hail Sega. By another Dreamcast. And let's not mince words here. Luke is a drama channel, and one that I think is pretty bad. And to me, he comes out as a mountebank. What the hell do I mean? Essentially, it's a pretender. Now, this is something that I could say about a lot about the commentary community. How they'll preach about their morals and how some people are terrible, and meanwhile they'll do stuff that's pretty shady, and people won't notice because they've established themselves to be the audience as a morally good person. One such example comes to when Luke in the pyro situation. And you turn out to be what a lot of people were calling you from the start. A clout chaser trying to ruin someone's career on YouTube, let alone on the internet, for attention. It should be noted that Luke has taken down his videos about this and has formally apologized, but this is only one of many examples that I have to point out. 
But back to my issue, when Luke initially had his video posted, I re re released documentation and information that did actually back up a number of his claims. Something that Luke didn't bring up, and it was funny because for that whole pyro situation, Luke loved to flip flop. And to point out, just because someone has apologized, if they keep on displaying the same behavior that they're apologizing for, I don't think it's in the wrong to bring this up as an example of how they effed up. I mean, people love to do that to me about this. And yes, Luke has done other things of this caliber that he hasn't publicly apologized for, so I think this is warranted to be brought up. What things, you may ask? Well, let's look behind door number two! Which? Honestly, in the entire Hopeless Peaches situation, if you're not familiar, I'm not going to cover it. There's, like, a plethora of videos out there. I seriously have to question if not only Luke, but if anyone who actually watched his video had the ability to read. Luke's handling of the Peaches situation was terrible. Even if you want to take into account that he does get Camilla's and Creepshow Arts testimonies, which are technically stronger than what he has, he still pulled some shady stuff. Like, take his second video. I said she was sympathy baiting to her audience. No, 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 Luke. You did not say that. You don't get to rewrite history. You decided to suicide bait your audience, going off the grid for hours to make your audience worry that you hurt or killed yourself. And guess what? Two days later, you were back to making tweets again. And she's been doing this for a long time. It's very manipulative, and she's always using her mental health as a pity me card. It's very scummy, and it says a lot about her as a person. I said she was sympathy baiting to her audience. You decided to suicide bait your audience. I said she was sympathy baiting to- You decided to suicide bait your- Dementia. Call Hazy Memories Nursing Home. Leave them here, we'll watch them. Yeah, that was your claim, Luke. Now, to clarify, I don't know if Luke did that intentionally. I don't know what's in his brain. Will you knock it off? I can't hear myself sing. I want some peanuts. That's better. But I will say that I find it a bit eyebrow raising that Luke didn't correct himself in his second video on the matter. Like, that raises a red flag to me. Either way, it's still kind of disgusting for Luke to bring this up and interpret a tweet in the most negative way possible. And I'm honestly just tilting my head here wondering how people can take this video seriously or see it as credible. Are you there? Why are you eating this malarkey with your own hands? You should be eating it with someone else's! Ha <laughs> ha Now, concerning this point still, there's a bigger issue, and that's how Luke decided to take something that is a cry for help in these mental issue moments being characterized as something sneaky, malicious, uncharitable, thesaurus.com broke for me, and sets a terrible precedent for how we approach these suffering mental health concerns. And more so, when people like Hotbox pretty much parrot the exact same sentiment. He sounds like he's telling the truth here. However, if you pay attention, you can tell he's changed his allegations from by baiting to sympathy baiting. Ah, oh, tomato, tomato, peaches. The only one half listening is you. Because you see one little word change and you think that invalidates his whole statement. No, he's on the same page. You were baiting in both senses of the word. I see my ass. No, it's not tomato, tomato, hotbox. It's a lesser claim to say someone is sympathy baiting. Peaches is right to say that sympathy and suicide baiting are different claims that carry different weight. If we're pretending that suicide baiting means what Luke implied it meant. It would not kill you to give her one point. The valid accusations against her will not disappear in a puff of smoke if you give her so much as an inch when she earns it. Without any actual context to these tweets, we can't see what Peaches was referring to. Hell, she could just be saying that she's done with Twitter. I know a few times I said I'm done on Twitter, and although Peach is clarified otherwise, later, and the way that Luke interprets it, is clearly done with malicious intent, and complete ignorance of what actually happened. But hey, I guess diving into the worst interpretation imaginable is good too. Now, if I can take a moment and criticize Peaches, I think it was a bad idea for her to delete her Twitter, since we don't have any means to actually check these tweets or find any actual context to them. And if you know anything about Twitter, since it's been well past over 30 days, that thing's long gone. Although, Harley TBS has clarified that when speaking to Peaches, she attempted to recover her Twitter with him. However, it has sadly been just past 30 days, and meaning Peaches had to make a new Twitter, and, and that old evidence is now gone. And I know this too because I talked to her about this as well. But hey, I only select who I criticize, I guess. Getting back to Luke, he also had a nasty habit of not actually reading what he has on screen. There's a two-part video from Malice and Macaroons who does a good job breaking down the Peaches drama, and although I disagree with a few things in the first and second video, I do think she does a good job highlighting the issues that I'm talking about when it comes to Luke. I'd like to show a couple minutes from here, but if you want to see more about this, I'll be linking her video in the description down below. 
I recommend watching the videos, but for now, I think a few clips are in order to express my issue. Well, a little bit after the video went up, she made an apology on both her Twitter and YouTube and addressed everything she did. I did have some issues with it, but I wasn't going to call her out over it. If this is where the drama ends, I'm willing to bite the bullet. But that's not where it ended. She kept going on about it. And not only that, instead of being sorry for what she did, she turned really bitter about having to apologize and started lying about me. Where just a few days later, it turned from an issue she had to work on and improve, it turned into me being this awful person who was throwing around accusations that were ruining her career. Even though if you went to her social or her Twitter, you could see that she was gaining subs. Which is funny because you say I called you a liar for no reason, but there you are lying about the effect I had on your channel for no reason. Right off the bat, does anyone see the problem here? Anyone? Timmy in the back, maybe? No? Okay, let me break this down for you. In the screenshot that Luke displays here, claiming that Peaches is calling him a terrible, awful person, Peaches explicitly says she doesn't think that. Huh. Funny that. Let's take a closer look at what's being said. Reading for I don't believe the goo. Due to these tweets and the fact I didn't go through with it, has caused allegations of me faking suicide and suicide baiting. I have lost subs already due to this video, and I have had a lot of comments about me or at me, calling me manipulative, a liar, and everything in between. I don't believe the guy who made the video said this stuff due to being intentionally malicious. I feel it was all just being heated and interpreting me in the worst way. But I can't shake this. It feels so much worse than anything else. It hurts to know that, well, because I didn't die that day, I am seen as a manipulator and liar. Again, that is not what he wants or anything at all. It's just how my brain is perceiving it because, no, I am not mentally well right now. That is kind of how a brain like mine, and probably others like me, would perceive this. Though I do know I need to remember that that can't be the truth. I hope not. Hmm, gee, that doesn't sound at all like... How did you put it, Luke? It turned into me being this awful person who was throwing around accusations that were ruining her career. To be honest, this sort of makes me really mad. She even had notes that he was interpreting her in the worst possible way, and he's doing it again right in front of the words that disprove his claim. Not to mention that she had a video that came out after this that gave her a pretty strong sub boost that was completely separate from her sub loss after your video. To look purely at a sub count rise and not take into account the activity of her account is either short-sighted or purposefully misleading. He claims after this that Peaches said it negatively affected her channel, and then he refutes it by showing her channel growing afterwards. This is poor research and comes off as manipulation of the facts. Looking at her social blade from the week she tweeted this of November 9th, you'll see she does actually experience sub loss. The only reason she grew so quickly afterwards was because her story of abuse blew up. He took two different scenarios and mashed them together to try and say Peaches was lying, ironically making him look like that in the process. And I know what Luke would say to all of this as it was a point recently addressed in in his Just Stop response video. Luke states that he showed evidence that backed his claims somewhere else in his video. Okay, let's pretend for a moment that's actually what happened. Well, you're just bad at your job, and you were bad at your job repeatedly. Now let's stop living in pretend land where Luke is just bad at making his videos and actually talk about the claim of this evidence being shown elsewhere in the video. Well, I did use the wrong screenshot there, but there are other screenshots that I did show of her demonizing me and backpedaling, trying to paint me as this evil larger creator targeting her, but you can't say I'm purposely leaving out context to make my argument look better when you do the exact same thing throughout this whole video. This screenshot does not prove your claim any more than the one you said was used incorrectly. Either you seriously cannot read the things you put on screen, or you're pulling the same trick by putting screenshots up that don't support you and pretending that they do. Let's read the two you used here out loud and compare them to your claims. Yeah, I won't lie. To have a channel bigger than me with such a popular video, with so many people attacking my character or just me outright because I didn't die, it's like the whole world is saying I should've. At Lady Horizon T94, yeah, I just have so many feelings swirling in my head right now that 100k plus people all seem to agree with the sentiment I am a liar and a scumbag because I didn't die. I'm sorry Luke, do you want to run that by me again? Please, by all means, point out where in these screenshots Peaches is backpedaling. Show me the words where she says prison mate Luke is attacking me and wishes I had died. By all fucking means, enlighten me. So yeah. 
Luke will either not actually read what he's showing on screen, is so inept with his editing that he'll show the wrong screenshots, or he won't actually back up what he's saying at times. And people just ate it up. Fuck is this shit? I eat pain. Luke has a really nasty habit of selective information. Basically, it's him cherry-picking information that validates his opinions and views, meanwhile he'll leave out context that actively goes against his preconceived notions. And no one bothers to actually go search to see if what he's saying has context, because who the hell cares? Well, give me one moment and I'll drag you into the insanity of this. GET IN HERE! Take for example, Just a Robot, who was accused of being... Luke never really addresses the fact that Jar made a response to that video, nor does he actually acknowledge that. Has Jar said stupid things in the past? Yes. Has he done stupid things in the past? Yes. I can obviously testify to that, as I was also being stupid during some of that. There's also stuff like this. Along with that, he has multiple videos of just having blackface versions of himself. Black versions of me? No, it's just in the same art style. And the guy I made it for, who by the way, is actually black, was over the moon about it. Now I don't blame Luke for this, but some people got the impression that this was me and we don't even sound similar. Hello, I am Professor Dreadlock. I am friends with Just the Robot. And at the end of the video, we had some bloopers where we were talking to each other. Now if you excuse me, I have a vacation to attend to an academic Gorodok. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we need the first part of interaction. Oh, right. At this point in time, Jar made a video responding to Luke's points about him, so really it's more appropriate that you watch his response and come to your own conclusions. Don't let me influence you on that right there. Has Jar said stupid things in the past? Yes. Has he done stupid things in the past? Yes. Hell, I still don't forgive him for something extremely terrible. The fact he can't pronounce Pokemon names for shit. I didn't want to end with this one. Electrobe? Really? Who the says Electrobe? I'm not saying Jar is not above criticism for what he said or how he said it. I'm just saying that if you're proclaiming someone done screwed up, then it's only fair that you let your audience know that they've addressed these and not try to misinform your audience about these things. If you get your claims wrong about someone, that calls into question other claims that you may have about a person. Even then, Luke, when you were called out for your issues with the pyro drama, you made it clear that you screwed up and that you supposedly were going to improve upon this. Shouldn't that mean that the people you've called out get the same treatment? Shouldn't you have improved from that? Hell, even a pinned comment would be a good idea if you don't want to make a full-on video about the subject. At least acknowledge that the people you're talking about are at least attempting to make amends. If you're looking for another take on the situation with Jar, I suggest Shady Do-Rag's take on it. I don't know, he just seems like he's more eloquent with the situation than I could ever be. Yeah, Jar should be thinking about what he's saying, but his way of speaking is one of the things that drew me to his channel. There are some channels out there who are good at making you feel like you're just having a conversation with someone, and it's very refreshing. There are many examples like this of Jar saying insensitive things, but when you add the context to them, they are clearly not racist. Even if this was a black avatar jar, which it isn't, having this does not make him racist. As for just stop, well, I'll be ringing him up again, let me play the clips, and you tell me what you think is going to happen. This is about the Lexit situation, a situation I'm not too interested in, but one where an artist was apparently sending not safe for work images to minors or something like that. I don't want to get too much into it because it's not important for this video. We're making it seem like the image couldn't have been sent because it wasn't even created yet. The duck maker had speculated this by giving a name and showing comments, but they never got proof as clear as this. Even after this, there was still room for interpretation as no one had a screenshot of the supposed original post, which is the main factor in determining if she could have sent it December 1st. The duck maker says it was posted that day, but they just say that. They never show any evidence. Once again, I and the others had to do their job for them. That same patron that gave us the email showing she edited a separate December 8th post also had an email for the original post of the NSFW. It was on November 30th. This all means that Lex fabricated evidence to try and turn us away, and while the image could still be easily inspected elemented, the way she acted has almost confirmed its validity. However, people following the situation may not have seen any of this up until now. That's because it was me, Harley, and the past patrons that were able to get this information through deep diving into the situation and looking hard for substantial evidence. Luke might say he doesn't need a deep dive to get to the truth of a topic, but all he did was regurgitate what was stated on the dock with no research, skepticism of claims, or anything. And based on all the evidence he had, there was still plenty of room for interpretation. Which is what Just Stop and Harley and all of them want to justify it as, as her doing nothing. Because all of them want to defend a criminal on the basis of nothing. <laughs> I just threw open my mouth. Now, this is just terrible timing, especially since Just Stop's video came out three days before Luke's did. So Luke's claim flies in the face of established information. In the screenshots shown, was Just Stop talking to Lexit in a positive way? Yes. But there's a lot more to note about that because Luke leaves out a lot of context. 
The first being that if this was a private conversation in an ongoing situation. Apparently, with how Luke sees it, if you would ever dare to attempt to try to get the other side of an accused's story, you are now supporting them. Even if afterwards you provide evidence of the person lying to you and fabricating evidence and you come out against them publicly. In addition, it's a technique used in journalism and even in real life that if you suspect someone of something, that you can get in close with them and earn their trust in some regard. Not only will they be more open to giving you more evidence, but also have them being more relaxed in this regard so they can be more loose with what they say. Which is what happened in this situation since there was more evidence discovered. Glad to see you're part of the worst portion of cancel culture, which is also ironic since this is also the same man who basically slammed a victim because of the pyro stuff in his videos. And you turn out to be what a lot of people were calling you from the start. A clout chaser trying to ruin someone's career on YouTube, let alone on the internet, for attention. What's really funny is that he says he's doing this for the victims, which if that was the case, dude, you wouldn't have pulled that shit you did in the pyro drama. Oh man, you are something. Oh, this is the best. Man, you really cracked me up. <laughs> for the victims, huh? I think I've expressed why I don't like prison mate Luke, and why I don't think he's a good commentator. Now before I wrap this up, I think it's important that I say this. That I myself have been criticized by Luke for doing something in the past and how some people think I'm being biased about this. Well, sucks to be you guys who are going to claim that because besides this one section, I haven't spoken a damn thing about the criticism levied at me in this video. You see, unlike Luke here, I don't need to make a huge response video to criticism that I think is valid. And even if you bring up his fundamentally flawed video response to Just Stop, in which he spends the entirety of the video with piss poor arguments, what about isms, and but you do it two points, he still agrees with the core of the video but he certainly hasn't abided by it. When most of my videos don't need some deep dive to find the truth, or even if there needs to be one. Oh crap! Know that this video isn't done as revenge, but because I genuinely think that Luke is bad for the commentary community and needs to be called out for his actions. And considering there are bigger creators out there such as Diesel Patches, who are willing to defend Luke because he's new or they've talked before and they're genuine, You gotta tear me apart, Lisa! Or Creep Show Art, who was willing to denounce the document that highlighted issues with Luke's coverage of the Peaches drama, and not even bring up the fact that most of the document was covering him because he was the one who started that train wreck of a drama. Goes through some of the points in the doc that we actually had something to do with, which start on page 20 of this 36 page document. To write this document, it's a weird fucking move. And she immediately complains about how long the document is. Okay, so a lot of that is because of screenshots and we go over multiple videos. You also just gloss over how the bulk of the doc is dedicated to Luke because as we literally say in the doc, Luke is the person with the most evidence in his situation and his own evidence completely contradicts the narrative that he's pushing. But you decide to just complain about the length. Sorry for trying to be thorough and actually compiling screenshots, I guess. This isn't me gatekeeping. This is me outright saying that, in my opinion, I believe Luke is a terrible content creator and has a worse influence on the commentary community. I don't care if he's new. I don't care if he's buying off more than he can chew. Especially when you consider the fact that, with the exception of creators bigger than him calling him out, or when he dragged his heels with the Yandere dev situation, he has not once bothered to apologize for any of the shit he's gotten wrong in his videos, even though it's been clearly pointed out to him. And remember, what I put out there is what I put out there, and what I put out there is my opinion. THAT'S SOMETHING I DO! He can have his opinions. Surely I can have mine and express them, right? Are you gonna hold a double standard in that regard? I do think that Luke is a bad influence on the commentary community, especially with how he goes about talking about drama topics. You can disagree with what I said, but I've laid my cards on the table. How about you lay down yours?